Yeah, I've definitely gone through a lot. Um, new coaches, new arenas, uh, new players, everything uh, since I've been here. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. And I've, I've learned a lot about myself. I've grown as a person. Uh, you know, I've, I've built a lot of character. Hi, Duck fans. Kurt here. Time for another fishduck.com update. I'm doing this video a little early this week because I'll be traveling back to Oregon this weekend for a few days. Well, it was an interesting week in Oregon sports. Uh, the Ducks didn't make the NCAA tournament, but they made the most of their opportunity to host an opening round game of the NIT. They destroyed LSU on national TV Tuesday night. LSU did make it a little bit interesting late in the second half, but another run by the Ducks sealed it. Game over. Ducks won 96-76. Up next, they host Iowa on Sunday, again at Matthew Knight Arena. Not sure what uh, team Jill Savage will be cheering for, but uh, one thing's for sure, she'll be wearing yellow and black. However, it wasn't all good news for basketball this week. Uh, on Monday, sad news emerged that Dick Harder passed away. Harder was Oregon's coach from 1971 through 1978. In fact, he won the Pac-8 Coach of the Year award in the 1977 season. Later, he was the first coach of the Charlotte Hornets, and he had other stops in college and the pros. Dick Harder was 81. There were also some accolades to go around for basketball. E.J. Singler received a very nice honor, being named to the NABC, that's the National Association of Basketball Coaches, All District 20 second team. That's all I've been processing, you know, these last couple of, couple of days, to be honest with you. It's been, it's been a short visit, you know, I feel like I just got here and now I'm already leaving, which is kind of sad, but, you know, this is a good opportunity to just play your heart up for the last time in front of the Oregon fans. Just have a good time. Oh, and don't look now, but uh, it's getting pretty close to the start of spring football. Uh, the spring game is going to be held on Saturday, April 28th. So, a little over a month and a half away, but, you know, practice will be starting up very soon, so we have that to look forward to. All eyes, of course, are going to be on the quarterback position battle, though I don't anticipate that being settled until late into fall camp. Now, Oregon baseball right now has a three-game road trip in Husky country. They're taking on the dogs Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Baseball right now is 12-3 and going into this series against UW, and they're really among the hottest teams in the country. They ranked anywhere between 13th and 17th, depending on which poll you look at. Uh, these ducks are definitely Omaha bound for sure, so more people should really be paying attention. Take a trip out to PK Park. Also not to be outdone, softball has been on quite a streak as well. They're ranked 14th in the country right now, though they did lose to Alabama on Tuesday at Howe Field. Now, don't feel too bad about that. Keep in mind, Alabama's ranked number one in the country, so... It's not shameful to lose 5-1 on your home turf to the number one team. Their next games are a three-game stretch in Corvallis, taking on the Beef Trash next weekend. In track and field, the women once again dominated the indoors, becoming three-peat indoor national champions, while the men finished 25th. The outdoor season now starts up, first with this Sunday, beginning with the Oregon preview at Hayward Field. That's going to be followed by the USC Invitational the following weekend. As for women's lacrosse, they're currently 3-3 three and three on the season. They have a match on Friday with Marist and San Diego on Sunday. In tennis, uh, the men's team continues to impress. They had a win over Weber State last weekend that moves them up in the rankings to 50th with uh, matches at San Francisco and Fresno State this weekend. Uh, the team is 11-1 and one on the year, and the women's team is almost as good. They've racked up a record of 8-2 and two thus far, and they're hosting Cal on Saturday. Golf news, uh, the men's team is at the Bandon Dunes Championship all this weekend, while the women will be bound for Maui next week for the Kapalua Golf Club. Yeah, I wish I could go to Maui right about now and, uh, you know, get a free ride, go play some golf. That sounds pretty good. And rounding out all the spring sports, the defending national champion acrobatics and tumbling team is attending the third meet of the year for them on Saturday. That'll be in Rome, Georgia. They're facing Maryland, Quinnipiac, and Fairmont State. And we're also about a month away from soccer season starting. 
The first game is scheduled for April 14th at Oregon State. So that does it for current Duck Sports right now, but the reason why I list those off is just to really emphasize that fans need to look around. There's more than just football and basketball taking place. Oregon sports have reached a level I can't recall it ever hitting before. Baseball, tennis, golf, softball, basketball, football, uh, acrobatics, uh, every sport. Oregon is competitive on a national level. This is really a remarkable time for Oregon athletics, and Duck fans need to be paying attention. It's more than just football. Long Beach State game two. Here's Ashlew Dedlow. Gonna drive. Oh! As for fishduck.com, the improvements to the site continue. It's an ongoing process. It will be for the next couple of months while we look to majorly upgrade everything that is on our site. We're hard at work improving the structure and the content. So be sure to come join the conversation in the fishbowl. That's our website's message board. And spend some time digging through the fish tank. That is our vast video archive that contains thousands of Oregon Ducks videos, all organized into easy to navigate categories. Now we had lots of great content on the site this past week, so here's a quick rundown. On Monday, I had an article out that covered the history of everyone's favorite fowl, the Oregon Duck mascot. Now, if you love the duck as much as we do, then go read this article and learn a few things that you may not know about the history of ducky. Tuesday is our Fish Duck Video Day, and Josh Schlichter had another Fish Duck Minute, this time looking at other Pac-12 teams that are running spread offenses that implement outside zone lead runs. Also on Tuesday, Jared Young took a look at the women's golf team, which has gotten off to a phenomenal start this year, specifically the freshman star of the squad, Casey Isagawa. It's only a matter of time before she's on the LPGA Tour. Isagawa is an absolute star on the links. If you want to know why the golf team is being so successful this season, look no further. Casey Isagawa, she is amazing. Wednesdays are our recruiting days on fishduck.com, and Mark Flores again had a breakdown of all the news that's taking place in football and basketball recruiting. We then had two interview videos. First, my next Fish Duck one-on-one -on -one interview video was released on late Wednesday afternoon, this time speaking with Keith Gunther. Now, if the name doesn't ring a bell, Keith was an offensive lineman for the Ducks from 1973 through 1977, and both of his sons ended up as starting offensive linemen for Utah and San Diego State. Keith played under three different head coaches, Dick Enright, Don Reed, and his senior year was the first year of the Rich Brooks regime. He had some fabulous stories from Duck Football in the 70s, so please go check it out. And not to be outdone, on Thursday, our Jared Sawyer had a face-to-face -face video interview with an Oregon Ducks legend, Anthony Newman, or Q. Now, younger fans may only know Anthony as a broadcaster for OSN covering Duck games, but Anthony was not only one of the best safeties to ever play at Oregon, but he had a lengthy NFL career. Uh, Q reflected on his playing days and his pride as a duck and a whole lot of other topics, so please go watch that as well. And on Friday, proud new dad, Josh White, didn't let the baby get in the way of providing a column, reflecting on the last time that Oregon hosted a NIT game prior to this year, that epic 2004 battle with Colorado where Luke Jackson put on a Superman cape and willed the Ducks to victory in one of the most impressive individual shooting performances I can ever recall. He scored 29 points in a row, I believe 43 total for the game. If you want to go relive that great memory, go read Josh's column. And now, my Tweet of the Week. Hey, will you shut up? Thank you. Every week I provide a music recommendation here. I live in Los Angeles, I work in the music industry, I feel I know a thing or two about it, and I try to introduce you to an artist that, you know, maybe maybe slipped through the cracks, maybe you didn't hear about. It. This week I want to introduce you to The Smirk. 
The Smirk are an independent rock band from New Haven, Connecticut, creating a soul funk approach to indie rock with a little dash of emo thrown in. Complex rhythms and smooth as silk vocals make for a really fascinating blend as the group writes songs about comic book characters and other pop culture aspects, these guys take their nerd culture very seriously. Their music is a little volatile and edgy, yet it, it's fun. It's really like nothing I've ever quite heard before, but there are certainly elements of prints and living color in the sound, along with a saves the day style emo twinge as well. It's a fascinating blend, I really like it a lot. Their music is available to download free from their website, so please go check it out, including this track called The End of Jason Todd. If you don't recognize the name Jason Todd, from it's from the uh, Batman comic books. Jason Todd was the second character who became Robin and was killed by the Joker. It's nerd-rific. So that does it for me this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm off to Oregon for a couple days to attend a funeral, but keep checking back to the site as we will have new content daily and make sure to pay attention to Oregon sports beyond just football and basketball. There's so much greatness taking place in Oregon athletics right now. Soak it in, enjoy it. There's a lot of great things being done by Oregon athletes, so please support. Until next week, this is Kurt saying go fish, get hooked, Go Ducks.